God bless your assistant powerfully and abundantly. As you know, we are in the month of sanctification. I, do, I hope, I mean, I do believe that you are following day by day the Bible reading and also the prayer, the meditation, and the anointing on top of your head. We are investing in our sanctification because as we as we, we spoke in the meeting, if we don't sanctify ourselves, how can we sanctify the name of our Lord Jesus? It's not going to happen. Impossible. We cannot give what we don't have. We only give what we have. Throughout this program, we're going to talk more about it. And also, we have um, some interviews that I made with some assistant here uh, in Brooklyn. Uh, they are going to share their experience that, that they had last month when we spoke about the excellent spirit and also the experience they are having this month, the month of sanctification. All right, we'll be back after this commercial. A follower waits to be given bread and fish. A disciple is a fisherman. A follower strives to grow. A disciple strives to make other disciples. A follower surrenders some of himself. A disciple surrenders his entire life. A follower likes to be praised. A disciple likes to serve and sacrifice. A follower adds, but a disciple multiplies. A follower is controlled by his circumstances. A disciple uses his faith to overcome them. A follower is valuable, while a disciple is indispensable. The Universal Church of their Kingdom of God find practical faith for life. Pay attention to what this assistant, this Margaret, uh, is talking about the excellent spirit uh, that we had last month. Of course, this is something we have to give continuation. It's not because the month of excellent spirit is over that we are going to ignore everything we spoke about and principally the use of the excellent spirit in our life. This is for us to give continuation until the end, until we leave this world. And also our experience with the sanctification. Pay attention to what she's talking about. All right, I'm going to talk with this assistant, She's going to share with us a couple of experiences she, she's, uh, she had last month and this month. What's your name? Margaret. Uh, Miss Margaret. Yes, uh, Last month, mm -hmm. we, for the whole month, mm -hmm. we spoke about the excellent spirit. Mm -hmm. And then now, August, we are. Uh, yeah. sanctifying our life mm -hmm. and sanctifying the name of our Lord Jesus. Mm -hmm. Which experience you had last mm -hmm. month uh, with the excellent spirit? How, how good was it for you? Bishop, it was good. Um, because the whole month we prepared and we had a match to pray with. Okay. So every day I made sure I read um, uh -huh. the verse, the Bible verse that we were given. It was not only the verse. Sometimes I read the verse before mm -hmm. and after to get a better understanding of what it was about. Um, so when I came, it was I was prepared for it. But um, the highlight for me at that meeting last week was um, when you said, come over here. We went to the altar to empty ourselves. It's like um, giving us another chance if you had any grudges. But of course, the whole of the month, 
to have an exp uh, excellent spirit, you have to empty your heart. You have to clean yourself. You clean your mind, your heart, and everything. But that was another opportunity you gave us. The come. Whatever you may have before you have the, 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 the last of year. Exactly. The Lord's Supper. Come and clean yourself. Look back and see. Did I do everything according to what I was supposed to do during the month of July? That was a highlight for me. So we went there with that opportunity. Some of us made I hope everybody made use of that opportunity to clean themselves. You know, if you had any grudge against anybody, if you are angry with anybody, to so ask God for forgiveness. So that as we prepare for this month of uh, sanctification, we'll be better prepared for our next meeting. Uh, in the, uh, you, you, you spoke about something important, Mr. Mm -hmm. Mark. Yeah. Uh, about the, the cleaning of our heart. Mm -hmm. If we keep bad feelings yes. or resenting, yeah. we have something against, it can be a family member, mm -hmm. a co-worker, yeah. somebody in the church. Yeah. There is no excellent spirit. You will not have an extra. Uh, that does not show an excellent spirit. Right. Because excellent means uh, completely free of any garbage. <laughs> that is not excellent. So if you have, uh, if I'm angry with you, I'm going to come to you as a bishop. You said this thing, but I'm not happy about it. If I have a friend like in the other room, in, in, the, in the changing room, in the locker room, women talk a lot. All that <laughs> gossip we have to forget about gossiping. Okay. You know, you may not know that what you are, you are saying is bad, but to prevent everything from it, just stop it. Do not discuss anything negative about anybody. That is, does not show an excellent spirit. And now yes. we are uh, in the month of sanctification. Yes. And keeping our garment yes. white. White, yes. Clean and yes. pure. It's just like, for me, it's like a follow-up of the excellent spirit that we had. It's a follow-up. We still have to continue... To keep a clean mind, a clean heart for everyone. No gossiping. We have to cut that off, especially women. We have to cut that off. And we have to continue with prayer. Obedience is very important as well, Bishop, because um, the prayer mat we have, you said kneel down. We have to anoint ourselves every morning with the oil. That was especially, you know, we are uh, blessed at the meeting. We have to anoint ourselves with it every morning. And I do it, and I kneel down, and I make sure I still continue to read my verses and not only that um during the day i know we are all busy but if we can spend even if it's five minutes what i do like um i will use that time go to the restroom i tell i say listen i have to use the bathroom i go there and pray you know to have it's also good to have your communion with with god yeah even if it's five minutes or ten minutes if you can afford half an hour that's fine but just make sure every day you have your communication with mm -hmm. god so you don't forget. Miss Margaret, yes, uh, in which, which branch are you serving as an assistant? Oh, 14th Street, you are the, cathedral, the cathedral, right here as an assistant. Here uh, in Brooklyn. Here in Brooklyn. And I'm praying every day, I pray for strength <laughs> that I remain in the presence of God and on his altar. God, Bishop, this is where I receive the Holy Spirit. Amen. Where am I going to go? Nowhere. Nowhere. So Nowhere. I'm here. Yes. No matter what they have. No matter what happens. We stay here. We stay right here. No matter what Satan tries to do, we are fighting. It's a war. Not only midnight warfare, every, every day. day is a battle. <laughs> we have to keep him under our feet every day. Until the end. Until the end. Miss Margaret, thank yes, you very much. Thank you, Bishop. All right. This is a moment of meditation. All right. In the, book of, in the book of Romans, Romans chapter 12, if you haven't read this Bible verse, you are going to read uh, Romans chapter 12, uh, verse 2. Pay attention for you to understand uh, the importance of sanctifying our life daily. This is not something that we, we, we have to do or we do uh, sometimes or from time to time. This is something that has to be done every single day. Why? Because the God we serve is holy. <laughs> Our Lord Jesus said, Be holy, for 
I am holy. So how can we serve someone who is holy if we don't sanctify our life? It doesn't work. If we are serving God who is holy, and if we have His Spirit inside of us, which is holy as well, the Holy Spirit, so we have to separate ourselves from what is not holy. In this verse, the Apostle Paul said, and do not be conformed to this world. Why is saying that we should not be conformed to this world? Because this world is under Satan's control. That's why wherever we turn, whatever we see, we see bad things happening every single day, everywhere in the world. Because the world is corrupted. This world is dirty, is evil. And if we live our life in accordance or in communion with this world, how can we sanctify our life? How can we serve our God who is holy? We can't. When he said that we should not be conformed to this world. In other words, he's saying, <laughs> go uh, in an opposite direction. We can't, we can't follow uh, this world, what the world say, or what the people in this world, what they say, what they think, the pleasures, of this world. We, we died, as a matter of fact, when, uh, when, when we sincerely repented and we turned our back onto this world, we, we died for this world. And we were born to live in the kingdom of God. And the kingdom of God has absolutely nothing to do with this world. Though there are some or there are many who try to please both. They want to be in the kingdom of God, serving God, but they also want to be in the kingdom of this world. It doesn't work at all. They are those who after some time they, they fall because they are divided. Inside of them, they are divided. They are between the things of God and the things of the world. He, say, he said, do not be conformed to this world, this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect who you love your God. See the benefit of sanctification. See the benefit of sanctifying our life every day of separating our life from this world every day. I'm not saying you have to lock yourself inside of the house and stay there 24 7. You don't go out for anything. I'm not saying that. You have to work, you go to school, you see your family, your relatives, your friends. As normal as I do, <laughs> I do it. But it doesn't mean that I live my life in accordance with what this world offers 
to us. I live my life in accordance with the word of God. And that's what I suggest you to do for you to live in sanctification and sanctify the name of our Lord Jesus. All right. Uh, Sunday, I spoke with a young assistant. Pay attention uh, to what she's going to say. She took part of the last caravan to the Holy Land, to Israel. And she shared, and she's going to share with you, uh, part of her experience uh, during the days she was in the Holy Land, in Israel. And after that, we are going to pray together, making sure you have <laughs> your list of verses for us to keep our garments white. All right? Pay attention to, uh, to this young assistant. We'll be right back after that to pray together with you. All right, let me talk with uh, this assistant who has, uh, who has some amazing experience that she had in, in Israel. And she's going to share part of it with us. What's her name? Kimasha. Kimasha. Uh, recently, you, uh, you took part of uh, uh, the caravan. To, to Israel, to the Holy Land. Though we don't have enough time to describe everything you went through there. But uh, in, in this trip to the Holy Land, what is to doubt for you? What, what, what called your attention the most? The, 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 the strongest experience you had in the Holy Land Tell this assistant who is watching us. The, the Wailing Wall was the strongest experience because um, when you're there and you're talking, it seems like God is right there and he's listening to like whatever you're saying. And I felt like there were many around, but my focus was like mainly put on for the Wailing Wall. I took advantage of the opportunity and I was able to express myself freely in however way that I wanted to. And I felt like God himself was like right there, right standing there in front of me. Mm -hmm. You're talking about the waiting wall. Yes, sir. There were other places you also went. Yes, sir. Like Mount of Olives, um, the Jordan River. Tell us uh, what, what, what changed in, inside of you with, uh, during those days you, you were there. So, Bishop, I went there with um, a purpose because, like, even before we went on a trip, I said, God, I cannot come back the same. I have to grow. I have to move. Things have to move forward in my life because I don't accept to go on this trip, you know, investing in so many things and, you know, come back the same. So I made a purpose. And as I was there as well, the bishop was saying that, you know, Israel, many people come to Israel, Bishop, and they go back the same. And I took it as this is my opportunity. I'm coming here in Israel, but I'm not leaving the same way. I, there is times in the early in the morning, Bishop, I'll wake up, I'll talk to God, I'll fight, I'll do my purposes. I said, God, I cannot be one more person that came in Israel and lived the same. Something has to change. My mind, the way I think, my behavior, everything. Because Bishop was saying, leave everything that you have in Israel. Everything that, you know, that is not of God. Everything that, that loads you. Everything that's from your past. Everything that blocks your life. And I took that as, Bishop, this is my opportunity to change. So one morning I was sleeping. And the Holy Spirit woke me up, like, get up and pray. Bishop, I did not want to <laughs> get up because I was tired You're and we tired. had to go the next day. Your, your body want to stay. was physically back. tired, but he kept telling me, get up, get up, get up and pray. So I said, okay, I'm going to obey. I got up, I prayed, and I bent myself towards, on, I put my, my feet on the floor, Bishop, and I cried like a baby before God because there was many things he was showing me while the Bishop was talking that I needed to get rid of to be what God wanted me to be. So I tore it out. I said, God, this is what this is who I am. This is what I want to change. This is what I don't accept to be anymore. Help me, strengthen me. And I poured it all out, Bishop, in the hotel, in the floor, crying, crying on the floor like a baby. 
And from that day, I started seeing little change inside of me. My mind started changing the way I was seeing the trip was started changing differently. We wanted to help others as well, wanted to give for others what God's been giving for to me, what I'm receiving, not just keeping it for myself, but sharing with others my experience as well. Uh, some people, they, they go there, Kimash, um, as a tourist. They go, they, they go there just to, uh, to know the place. But this, is, this is, was not your case. No, sir. You went with a purpose of transforming your life, of changing your life. Yes, sir. It is, this is happening to you now. Yes, sir. So every opportunity I got, each place we went, I had a vision. God, okay, you were here, the month of transfiguration. My life has to change. You were here, so I need to see the same as well. We were going to the Jordan River. When I went down, I had a purpose. I didn't just go in the water. I just, I went in the water. I dipped myself. But I said, God, when I come up, I have to be different. Something has to occur inside of me. Kimasha, uh, this assistant who is watching, your, your watching us right now, who ever had an opportunity to go to the Holy Land, to go to Israel, what would you say to him? I would say invest. Invest, start now and invest because the investment that you're doing is worth it. It's once in a lifetime experience and what you learn, what you hear, the experience you have walking in the Bible is completely different because I've read the Bible, but for me, the trip taught me more about the Bible. So it's an investment that you won't regret and it's an opportunity that, that will be unforgettable. All right. Thank you very much. You're welcome, sir. We'll be back after that. In this manner, therefore pray, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done. On earth as it is in heaven, give us this day our daily bread. Please, close your eyes. It is now the moment of prayer. Holy Spirit, I exalt you. I praise your mighty name. I thank you, my Lord, because you, you always speak with us. You always reveal to us what we are supposed to do and what we should not do in order for us to live a life of sanctification. And as we spoke earlier in this program, when the Apostle Paul said, and do not be conformed to this world, how can we adjust our life or live our life, my Lord, in accordance with what the world offers to us? shows to us how can we sanctify our life if we are together or pleasing this world that has absolutely nothing to do with you. And I pray, Holy Spirit, for this servant, my Lord, who has joined this prayer with us, who perhaps is being divided inside of her mind, her heart, trying to please you and please friends and please the world of the side. My Father, you have chosen us, you have called us, you have put your spirit, which is holy, to dwell inside of us, for us, my Lord, to sanctify you, for us to exalt you, for us to live in holiness. So, my Lord, those who are divided, those who are in between your kingdom and the kingdom of the world, my Lord, I pray for you to stretch out your hand towards this person, 
to live in him up, to set him free from doubt, from evil thought, from fear. Lord, I rebuke this evil right now. In the name of Jesus, receive the presence of God. Be uplifted. You who are feeling down, you who perhaps have already left the word of the work of God. You are no longer serving as a sister or even as pastor or auxiliar. It doesn't matter the type. God has his hand stretched out in your direction to you right now. Hold his hand and be a belief. He gives you a chance, an opportunity for you to return to him. Return into his presence. It's not too late for you to do it. You are able to raise up your hands now and, and let him hold you by your hands and bring you back into his kingdom, into his presence, into his life, for you to live in sanctification, for you to take possession of your salvation. My Lord, I bless our view. I bless your servant who prays with me right now. And I bless in Jesus' name you who agree with this prayer. You who receive this blessing, you say Amen. Very soon we'll be back with more of our program assistant in focus. But let's keep on following our daily meditation, the daily Bible verse, praying, sanctifying uh, yourself. You are more than free uh, to write to me if you have any situation in which you, you want us to help you in prayer or you need counsel. My email is right there. You can write to me with pleasure. I will read your message and I will reply. And you, as we said in the prayer, you who, who are no longer serving God as an assistant, but it doesn't mean that God has forgotten about you, has ignored you. Of course not. We are 
we are ready to receive you back, hein? to pray for you, to give you a hand, to help you to be uplifted, to be renewed, as we say here, be renewed, uh, I mean, uh, be transformed by the renewing of your mind. This is possible to be happened. It is up to you to take a step towards the presence of God. All right? God is with you. Share the link with a friend. And very soon, we'll be back with more of our program, Assistant in Focus. Goodbye. And let every step I take to be guided by your ways. And may you, my Lord, be pleased with me And the way that I begin May my Lord show your face And may everything I do, my God Be just for your praise Touch me, my Lord Feet.